Hello, my name is Craig Blackwell. I'm an ophthalmologist in Santa Cruz, California. This is one of a series of videos about glaucoma. This particular one is about narrow angle glaucoma. Remember, this is for your information and does not replace consultation with your ophthalmologist. In simplest terms, glaucoma means that there is damage to the optic nerve that comes from too much pressure in the eye. The most common kind of glaucoma called open angle accounts for about 90% of glaucoma in the U.S. Narrow angle glaucoma accounts for about 10%, which is what we will cover in this video. The eyeball requires a certain amount of pressure to keep it inflated and functioning well, like in a tire or a basketball. To maintain pressure, fluid is constantly pumped into the eye by the ciliary body located just behind the iris. That fluid is called aqueous humor. It brings oxygen and nutrients the inside of the eye needs to function. Here is a diagram of the front of the eye. Picture it like the front of a watch. The cornea is like the crystal of the watch and the iris is like the face of the watch. In between there is a space called the anterior chamber which is filled with the watery aqueous liquid. Where the cornea and iris meet is called the angle of the anterior chamber. The angle is the key to our discussion. Here is how aqueous circulates in the eye. Aqueous is pumped into the eye by the ciliary body. It circulates around the lens and through the pupil to enter the anterior chamber. It leaves the eye through a filtering system called trabecular meshwork located in the angle. After passing through the meshwork, it is carried back into the bloodstream by the canal of Schlem. As years go by in everyone's life, the filtering system gradually decreases in function, which makes it more difficult for the fluid to exit the eye. Since the aqueous has a harder time getting out, the pressure inside the eye gradually rises. When pressure rises enough to cause damage, despite open access to the filtering system, that is called open angle glaucoma. The other common type is called narrow angle. Here is how that works. On the right side of the diagram is an open angle with plenty of space for the aqueous to reach the meshwork. On the left side, you can see the iris is pushed forward, leaving only a narrow slit for aqueous fluid to reach the meshwork. This angle is narrow, but not yet closed. If the iris moves any further forward, it will block access to the meshwork. This is a closed angle. If aqueous can't get to the meshwork, it can't get out of the eye, and pressure rises. The angle we are talking about goes around all 12 clock hours inside the eye. Narrowing and closure of the angle may occur gradually over years of time or suddenly within a day. With a gradual type of closure, the iris may block 6 clock hours, possibly up to 9, before pressure starts to rise. Timing is unpredictable and there may not be any warning symptoms. With sudden closure of the entire angle, pressure usually rises within hours to very high levels. It causes blurred vision and usually significant pain. Here is a textbook scenario for an acute angle closure attack. When you're in the dark, like in a movie theater, the pupil dilates to let in more light. As the pupil dilates, that crowds the iris into the angle blocking access to the meshwork. As access to the meshwork is blocked, pressure rises. That pressure pushes fluid into the cornea, causing vision to get blurred, creating halos around lights, and there may be an achy kind of pain. That is an acute angle closure attack. As you exit the darkness of the theater and return to the light, the pupil wants to constrict. With luck, that pulls the iris out of the angle, Aqueous can again find the meshwork and pressure goes down. Attack aborted. That is a temporary angle closure attack. Sometimes the angle closure doesn't break. When the pressure goes up, the iris gets stuck and pressure continues to rise. Over a matter of hours, the pressure climbs until the pump can't push any more fluid into the eye. That can be a pressure anywhere from the 30s to the 70s. A sudden rise to this high level is arrestingly painful. The first logical question is whether you can tell a narrow angle attack is coming, and if so, can it be prevented? Currently, that is a very interesting question. The answer is generally yes, 
but with reservations. At a regular eye exam, one of the things we check for is the depth of the angle. If it looks to be narrow from the front view, we have a special contact lens that lets us look directly into the angle. By looking to see how wide the angle space is, and other features, we can rate the risk of closure. The generally accepted treatment of angle closure, or high risk of closure, is the creation of an iridotomy. Otomy means hole. The diagram shows the concept. We're talking about making a hole in the iris, which acts as a bypass around the blockage. A laser is a good tool to make the hole because it avoids making a surgical incision into the eye. In the photo, the arrow points to such an iridotomy made by a laser. It is relatively simple to accomplish and risks are small. But here is the reservation. Sometimes there is an unusual configuration of the angle such that even though an iridotomy is successfully made, it does not provide the needed bypass. Then something else must be done. Let us conclude with a short discussion of recent thoughts on narrow-angle glaucoma treatment. Interestingly, there are racial differences in glaucoma types. In Europeans and Africans, open-angle glaucoma is much more common than narrow-angle, occurring five times more often. Whereas in Chinese, narrow-angle glaucoma is the more common, occurring twice as often. Rating the risk of angle closure is still not as good as it should be. Of eyes with an angle narrow enough to be considered at risk, only about 10% actually develop angle closure glaucoma. That means rating risk by angle width is only part of the story. New imaging technology is showing us structural details we haven't seen before. Here is what an ultrasound picture of the angle looks like, with a narrow but open angle on the left and a closed angle on the right. Ultrasound, or OCT, allows for measurements of iris structure and volume. That helps one theory relating angle closure to where the iris attaches to the wall of the eye. Another theory relates angle closure to change in iris volume with dilation. Eventually, we hope to have a better model and a more reliable way to predict who is at risk. We talked about iridotomy as the time-honored treatment for angle closure glaucoma. But follow-up of people who have had an iridotomy shows that a significant percent still go on to progressive angle closure with rise in pressure and development of glaucoma. One thing we did not talk about yet was the reason the angle gets narrower with age. That is because as cataract develops, the lens gets fatter and that pushes the iris forward. So one way to open the angle once and for all is to remove the cataract. Once the lens is removed, the anterior chamber becomes widely open and stays open, and pressure remains lower. While it is a more invasive procedure than laser iridotomy, it is a more definitive treatment. Time will tell if that becomes the best answer, or if there's a better one. As you can tell from these last examples, we are currently learning new things about narrow-angle glaucoma and its treatment.